So the final update of the main year of Modern Warfare is here, and it's one that's cost hard drives roughly 30 gigabytes of space. And for that, what could possibly be included in this? Such a big download has to yield something of great importance, right? Well, we'll see. Naturally, we're going to be breaking down every change here that you'll be seeing in update 1.29 for Modern Warfare. So that said, as we go along, what do you think of this final update for Modern Warfare's main year of support? Do you like it? Dislike it? Whatever it is, let me know down below. As well, if you are new to the channel, perhaps a part of that nearly 64% of viewers not subscribed, do be sure to hit the subscribe button as we're on the road to 400,000 subscribers, but also we have Black Ops Cold War launching later this week. So we'll keep you up to date with absolutely any and all things you need to know in relation to it. So if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's jump into the changes at hand. One of the first things you'll likely notice is the new main menu for Modern Warfare and Warzone. This doesn't have the best looking design in my opinion, but it creates some sort of folders almost for Modern Warfare, Warzone, and the new tile for Cold War. This is likely to help seamlessly transition between applications because as we mentioned in previous discussions about the ranking system, there's going to be a very conscious effort to keep all three games alive and unified as evidenced by the coming ranking system across all three games and that push then also for one battle pass. So they all look to be integrated together. But with this, you see Warzone, Modern Warfare, and Cold War. Warzone takes you to Warzone naturally. Modern Warfare takes you to the previously noted landing pages for Campaign, MP, and Spec Ops. And interestingly enough, without the shop there in its own tile. And then Cold War takes you to the store page for Cold War currently if you haven't pre-ordered or pre-downloaded it. But after that, we saw the big ticket item of this update, Warzone Private Matches. Finally. Now, this has actually been something that's been in the game files for months now and has been rumored for just as long to be coming. Even with the introduction of Blackout private matches, it was kind of inferred that it would happen even from the get-go when Warzone first launched. It was just kind of a matter of when. And today is actually that answer. Though, what's odd is that where Blackout had private matches and had these own shortcomings, so does the new introduction of Warzone private matches. If you remember back to Blackout, you could drop into private matches and explore the world by yourself, but you were limited to, I think it was around like 20 players or something. It was small scale that for the most part wasn't a real big issue unless you were really popular and had lots of friends who wanted to play a private match of Battle Royale. But with Warzone private matches, that limited player count isn't anything to worry about, but the minimum numbers are. Unlike Blackout's private matches, you can't jump in solo. Instead, for Battle Royale, you need at minimum 50 players to start, and this will come along then with squad variation levels of solos, duos, trios, and quads. For Plunder, you also need a minimum of 30 players to start, also coming with squad variations. And finally, you have the option to set it to mini BR, which doesn't let you explore the whole map because half of it's walled off already in a smaller zone, but that also requires you to still have 24 players. So for the most part, the casual players who want to just do Easter eggs and explore Verdansk, it's not really all that beneficial. It is certainly cool, but for many, I think this will be underutilized, maybe never touched to begin with. I think this is probably most practical for streamers and content creators who want to do, say, sub games with their viewers or something like that, or even custom tournaments from a top-down level and a more managed perspective. We saw this utilized at one point, I think, when Warzone was first started, and I vividly remember some CDL squads dropping in and fighting each other and only each other in a private match. It wasn't a regular matchmaking queue, but they made this whole sort of CDL tournament out of it. That's where I kind of think this will be most utilized, but otherwise it is kind of weird to see. I should also note and mention that this is in beta. They have mentioned that explicitly, so it very well could change as time progresses, but right now there's no timetable when that could be. So unless you got a lot of friends, you might not be utilizing this all that much. But like we said, that was kind of the big ticket item up on deck with this update, but it wasn't the only one actually. When it comes to Warzone, it seems like things are starting to move towards integration for Cold War, as now after half a year finally, we have MP and Warzone classes independent of each other, meaning that you can adjust your classes in either Warzone or MP, and it won't show in the other one. So 10 classes for MP, 10 classes for Warzone. Finally. Now, I would imagine this is logically just because we have weapons eventually being added in from Cold War, so that means that you can't have those Cold War weapons making their way over into MP for Modern Warfare. So they need to be detached in their own separate things here. Also talking about integration for Warzone, whenever operators decide to come to the fold from Cold War, we'll be able to choose fully as well because factions have now been broken down in Warzone's operator selection. It's just now one giant selection pool, so you'll be able to see those Cold War operators added right into the fold. But outside of that, we saw a few things on the front-facing side as we normally do with every update. 
For say playlist this week in the multiplayer side of things, we have Ground War, Gunfight, TDM Snipers Only, Hardpoint Hills and Kills, Shipment 24-7, and Shoothouse 24-7. Honestly, there are some good fan favorites with Shipment and Shoothouse, once again for the final main week of content support for Modern Warfare, so if you got any last minute challenges you need to do, this is a great time to do them. For Warzone, it's really nothing out of the ordinary, again, minus the fact that you can now go into private matches if you have the amount of players to do so, but this week we end up seeing solos, duos, trios, and quads on deck for BR, and then traditional plunder trios for plunder's variation this week. Outside of plunder, everything is is exactly how you'd expect it to be as the air quote norm. We also, as we always do, saw a few introductions into the shop with this update as well. Now, if there's any of these items that interest you and you'd like to support the channel a little further, like Nichols, Alex, that guy, Wavy, Operator, and AJ have, you can use code ESPRESSO in the Modern Warfare shop. It's entirely optional, but if you do, tweet me a picture. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support. Honestly, I think that this might be one of the best shop updates we've had in terms of giving us blueprints that are actually worthwhile and look pretty kick-ass. In the featured category, we have three new bundles here this week. We end up seeing that we have the Sergeant Griggs Operator Bundle for 2,400 COD points to start us off. This comes with the Sarge Outfit for Griggs and, of course, his Unlock as well. The War Pig M4A1, the Ultimatum MP5, the Auxiliary Melee, the Griggs Charm, the Step Aside Finishing Move, the Crush Sticker, the Cool As You Like Calling Card, the Fighting in the War Room Calling Card, and the Bad Dog Emblem. Griggs is awesome because it's Griggs, but the M4 Blueprint looks so sick to me, like a futuristic gun metal vibe to it and the build itself isn't half bad at all the mp5 is the same as well this one's just a really solid bundle i think here at this plus it comes with crimson and gold dismemberment tracer rounds so for those of you guys that like tracer rounds not only is this one available but also the next bundle we'll talk about that is the no place like home mara bundle for 2400 cob points also has tracer rounds as well this one's based off the wizard of oz for some reason but it comes along with the dorothy mara skin the homecoming kilo the bach renetti the toto finishing move for the hyena the Witchy Woman Weapon Charm, the Friends Mara Quip, the Winged Monkey Sticker, the Cyclone Calling Card, the Emerald City Emblem, and the Wicked Witch Spray. Now that Kilo Blueprint looks phenomenal, I think. It's pretty solid build. I'd change out one or two things here at this one, but overall it's pretty killer, not gonna lie. Interestingly enough though, it seems like you can't actually preview finishing moves in the shop anymore with these bundles. I tried to preview that Toto finishing move and it just wouldn't let me, but that's available for 2400 COD points. And finally, in the featured section, we end up having the Seer Kit Top for 1400 cop points. This comes with the Wolf Mother Growl Blueprint, the Feral HDR Blueprint, the Top Tier Loadout Calling Card, the Predator Emblem, and the Elite Trooper Spray. Now that Growl, I think looks phenomenal, simple, clean, matte finishes. I'm a big fan of all three of those things. Plus it's a meta build on that as well. So you don't really need to change out much of anything. That HDR is pretty solid as well, but I'd change one or two things here at that one. Now, outside of the featured category, we did get a few things introduced in the blueprints, but that may just be on my end here at this one because as we've talked about before they are user dependent and they may not be for everybody but firstly we see the spoiler bundle for 1000 cod points coming along with the grand shalem fal and the short shift renetti as well as the races on calling card both these blueprints look pretty cool but they're not necessarily builds that i would really recommend using you probably change out a majority of these items on this so that's something to take into consideration and then finally we ended up seeing the razor sharp bundle introduced for 1500 cod points that comes along with the guillotine car 98k and the pocketed malice uzi variant along with the razor blade charm and the mincing meat sticker these ones are relatively straightforward they have a sort of grungy feel to them but outside of that i don't think they're anything to really lose your lid over but that was really all that we had in terms of some front facing changes some stuff that's immediately visible we did have a few technical changes and we'll get to these in a second but surprisingly out of those technical changes we didn't have any weapon balancing or tuning passes with this update we saw a few things fixed in terms of weapons but they are more minor things those being the m4 tombstone blueprint that had a fix for a bug where the 458 socom rounds or the nine millimeter para rounds removed them from the weapon model so it was just a visual bug and we also saw a change to the tracer pack sakura edition maruyama blueprint where the dynamic icon appears to have a minor gap between the barrel and the body of the weapon when the compensator is equipped on the ftac 13.5 inch compact barrel that's something that's fixed but realistically that's not really a huge issue that was the only weapon changes that we had and they weren't really even weapon changes we had no change to the r90 fire shotgun which has been rampaging through warzone nothing of the sorts in terms of weapon tuning so kind of surprised by that one truthfully 
For technicals, we did see a lot of things listed, but truth be told, not a whole lot of them are actually substantial. Some things being like officer challenges 90 to 100 have been resetting for some players after they completed it, preventing them then from getting the last season six emblem, that 100% completion. So that's been fixed out with this update. There's a fix to help fight against the weapon corruption bug while in spectator mode in Warzone, which is that demon weapon model glitch that we've talked about plenty of times and has persisted for quite some time. LMGs, sniper rifles, and marksman rifles are now on rotation as intended in gunfight and a lot of other stuff that doesn't really need a lot of explanation. That stuff I can leave down there in the description below if you guys want to check out the full patch notes, but really it is a really big update for not a whole lot of stuff. So the question then remains of what was all of that data for? Well, I have a couple of hunches, but there also is one thing that is confirmed here with this. Paul Haley, production director at Infinity Ward working on Modern Warfare, ended up actually tweeting earlier in the evening, tonight's update will shrink the size of Modern Warfare and Warzone considerably on all platforms, a shrink of 25 plus Plus gigabytes. If you're interested in high resolution textures, they've been moved to a new high res pack for consoles. On PC, a new option has been added to stream high res assets dynamically if desired. He then later on continued by saying tonight's update also includes changes for support on next gen consoles for those lucky enough to have one. Enjoy. So a lot of what we see here is actually more so behind the scenes than anything else. Optimizing the game, making performance a little bit better for those next generation consoles, and hopefully making it look a little better as well. So a lot of this, not only by compressing file sizes and also allocating different resources to those high res assets, that's what this is predominantly about. Now, if that actually encompasses all 30 plus gigabytes that players had to download, your guess is as good as mine. I would go out on the limb and say that there's also some stuff here probably prepping for integration because how many more updates from now until December 10th and the DLC one launch where Cold War integrates then with Warzone? We don't know exactly. So this may have some stuff that is behind the scenes getting ready here for this. And also it could have even more. I would almost bet by the time we get to tonight, we're going to have a lot of stuff data mined and pulled out of this with plenty of people picking through the game code, either finding some cool stuff or maybe not so much. Maybe it is truly all technical changes. But for now, that's where we're at here at this. That's what we had. Everything changed within Modern Warfare's update 1.29 and what is likely the last title update here of the main year of support. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think here of this? Are you liking this update? Maybe not so much. Were you hoping for a little bit more? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and Modern Warfare where applicable. We'll keep you up to date with absolutely everything and anything you need to know. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with us on YouTube. Practically on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, links in the description below. But let's end another way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll actually see you guys later for a second video today, later on in the evening. So stick it here on the channel. But until then, have a great rest of your day. Take care and peace.